When it comes to a person's credibility, the moral and ethical conduct one demonstrates shows their trustworthiness in relation to the claims that they make. In a leader, this factor is highly important, and yet some make it apparent that they are not ashamed of their actions, while others try to maintain a good public perception for the purposes of affirming their testimony. In Jesus' life, he showed perfect adherence to the law of Moses, without scandal or moral failure, which has led many to believe that through him is the power to wash us from our sins. As for what many other people call the prophet Muhammad, the same could not be said, as there was a filth to him that is apparent to all those who know about what we will be disclosing within this segment that is both spiritual and physical. This is not something this channel is fabricating for the sake of shock value. Let's turn to one of the trusted sources of the Islamic faith, Sahih al-Bukhari, concerning the life and legacy of the alleged messenger of Allah, Muhammad, from what is considered his favorite wife and one of the greatest scholars to the Muslims, Aisha. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 232, narrated Aisha. I used to wash the semen off the clothes of the Prophet, and even then I used to notice one or more spots on them. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 230, narrated Sulaiman bin Yasser. I asked Aisha about the clothes soiled with semen. She replied, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's messenger, and he would go for the prayer while water spots were still visible. This is something that the closest eyewitnesses to this man's life said about him. Why would they write something like this unless it was true? Imagine you were anywhere in public and you saw a man walking around like this. You would be appalled and might even call the local authorities for indecent exposure. The last thought that you would have would be that this man was a messenger of God, and would be terrified to think of your kids being around a man like this. And yet this opens up another interesting point to Muhammad and Aisha that makes this dynamic all the more disturbing. Sahih al-Bukhari 5133 narrated Aisha titled Giving One's Young Children in Marriage that the Prophet married her when she was six years old and consummated his marriage when she was nine years old and then she remained with him for nine years i.e till his death. So here you have Muhammad, the alleged prophet of Islam, covered in his own filth, and has his nine-year-old child bride washing his clothes. How much more disgusting can this get? For the prophet of Islam, however, apparently much more. Here is another source about the life and legacy of Islam's greatest prophet. Sahih al-Bukhari 5215 narrated Anas bin Malik titled, Whoever had sexual intercourse with all his wives and then took one bath only. The prophet used to pass by, have sexual relations with, all his wives in one night, and at that time he had nine wives. In relation to what we have just read, consider how in Surah 4 verse 3 of the Quran, it says that a man is to marry within the limit of four wives. Some Muslim apologists might call Muhammad's actions wise but anyone who's paying attention would call this hypocrisy. 
With all that we have gone over, what does this say about close to 2 billion people in the world who believe that this man is God's messenger? We cannot assume that every Muslim knows this type of information, as they may not be Muslims much longer afterwards. As for those who do know, let me ask any Muslim viewers watching, how does all this make you feel that you live a more righteous life than this alleged prophet of your faith? The Bible makes it clear that marriage is between one man and one woman. And it says in Genesis 2 verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Jesus also spoke harshly against those who hurt children, saying in Luke 17 verse 2, It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Now, let's read one of the passages in the Bible that talks about cleanliness. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Jesus came not only as a servant, who even went as far as to wash the feet of his own disciples, but came to wash us clean from the sins of the world. To look up to Jesus is to look up to an example that is unattainable. As it reads in 1 Peter 2 verses 21 to 22, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. The testimony of the dirty false prophet Muhammad is nothing in comparison to the testimony of Jesus Christ, who cleanses all those who believe in him from all sin. Who are you going to believe? Someone who obviously used his position of authority to exploit those weaker than him to act on his sexual perversion? Or someone who walked on water, healed the sick and the blind, brought people back from the dead, and made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men? I know who I'd believe in. Do you?